I'm talking to Chris Taylor today. Chris, who has been an R&D manager for uh, Yamaha for nearly two uh, decades, had a long history of touring, long history of touring before that. Uh, Chris toured with uh, Barbara Streisand, Janet Jackson, Michael Jackson, Joe Cocker, Amy Grant, Michael W. Smith, tons of artists over the years, and uh, left the road to work for Yamaha and uh, was hands-on in the design of the Rivage console. I saw it from the ground up from when it was a, a sketch on a napkin until it was uh, released a few, several years after that, I guess. So uh, it's really exciting to be talking to you today. Yeah, well, I'm impressed to hear all of that. <laughs> Chris, tell me how you got here from your days of owning a sound company in Memphis to now working uh, at, at Yamaha in the R&D department. Well, you know, I started out, like you said, owning a sound company. And uh, after 10 years of that, I realized I wasn't that good of a business guy. I was a better mixer and found out that most people were paying me to mix, not hiring my gear. So I made the switch over to just mixing because it... Uh, like I said, I wasn't doing so great as a business guy. Uh, and uh, just I, just l the sheer luck of the draw, uh, things happened in my life that um, the, ba the biggest thing was meeting Amy Grant through my friends the Garmo and Key Band and ended up working for Amy Grant for 21 years. I mean, it's uh, an amazing long time and, um, and my, and just being at the right place in the right time, I, I won't, I went to work for Claire Brothers in somewhere in, uh, I think, uh, 1990, somewhere in there. And uh, that was a great move because that's where all the big acts were. And once they realized that you could um, go out and make things happen as far as putting in the PA work in every day and, and making the artist happy, then they gave you the opportunity to do more gigs and it just kind of kind of grew, but during all of that time, I stayed with Amy Grant. I stayed with Amy up until I went to work for Yamaha. And uh, at some point in there, I realized um, as my family got uh, bigger and and I, I really wanted to get off the road, so I made a, a plan to move to stop touring. It was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, but um, they offered me to go to work for for Yamaha, which I was a district sales manager for the first three years, which was definitely an experience, completely different from what I've ever done, but I was at home every weekend. Um, and then uh, somewhere along the line, they the, they needed an R&D person here in the US, and so I applied for the job and got it. And we started working on consoles, which is pretty much the only thing that I know. Um, and, worked on them. Uh, this one, this project uh, was quite a long project, somewhere around eight years when we started. We started from a piece of paper. Wow. And uh, start saying, uh, well, they had already drawn a schematic of a previous console they wanted to build, and, and there was a team of four of us. Uh, we started going over the pieces of paper and started marking out the things that we didn't think we needed because it was a massive project, and, and started from there. And this is the result. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I became a front of house mixer in the days when there was not a monitor mixer. And so it, it just kind of grew from there. And I, and I enjoy it because I'm a musician, started out as a musician, and I just like creating stuff. I loved the fact that, um, that you could create something and be part of providing excitement to the audience. At one point in time, I thought I wanted to be a studio engineer, but I realized that that was really hard work. <laughs> and in live, you know there will be a start and you know there will be an end. No matter how bad the night goes, it's gonna be over. And so, and that was the interesting thing to me. It was the adrenaline rush of, of making something happen and, and generating the excitement because I would do kind of weird things that I thought would be necessary in the show. Uh, like if the people weren't getting into it, you punch the kick drum up a bit, you know, and uh, or you create excitement by 
boosting levels at certain times. I, at one point in time, I had a, uh, a volume pedal on my subwoofers so that certain parts of the show I could hit them and they would go, then they would go away. Just, I just love the whole thing. That's great. Yeah.